This is video safety minute number two. Topic is worst, worst shift handovers. Uh, my name is TJ Larkin. I'm going to do this uh, this video, I'll try to keep it to about five minutes on um, the biggest problems in, in shift handovers. And then I'll do uh, uh, number three, which is, you know, the best, the best way to do a shift handover. But let me concentrate here on the problems, the worst shift handover. Let me start by just showing you that the handovers have problems, serious problems. Uh, good study by EHS today, oil and gas production facilities, 50% of accidents can be traced back to communication errors that occurred during shift handover. That's half. Very interesting by air traffic controllers is done by the FAA in the United States. They looked at 3,660 serious mistakes made by air traffic controllers. And in the investigation found that 50% of those serious mistakes happened within 30 minutes of a handover. So in the first 30 minutes of our handover, you have 50% of the serious mistakes. That's an indictment of what happened during that handover. The research on shift handovers in process industries like oil and gas is, is decent. It's pretty good. It's 10, 12, 15 studies, and they're pretty well done. However, the best people in this, in this area are hospitals, no question about it. They take shift handover very, very seriously, and the research is just extremely good. And there are literally hundreds of studies, and they're extremely well done. And why would that be? That would be because 80% of serious medical errors happen as a result of handovers. That's the Joint Commission. So what I want to do is take one second here, just one minute here, and show you the research on hospitals and handovers, because I think there's lessons there for those of us in process industries. You look at handovers, you look at the best handover research, and there's three lessons that I think that are worth taking. One is that the outgoing nurse is the problem. You know, what they found was that the outgoing nurses lacked enthusiasm, that the handovers were routine and often boring. The incoming nurses had a completely different mindset. They were, they were much more active. They were much more motivated. And look at this. Incoming nurses asked 10 times more questions than outgoing nurses asked. That's not normal. That's weird. We don't see that in communication research. That tells you right away that something's wrong. You know, these two parties are not on equal footing here. One is desperate to get information and one's desperate to get it over with. And that, you know, that's, that's where they located the problem. Perhaps more interestingly was the content was also wrong in medical shift handovers. And, and what was wrong? 40%, almost 50% of the content was a description of the current situation. And they criticized that. You know, if the handover is based on the fact that in room 1235 is Joe Murray and um, he's got liver cancer and he's here to undergo a treatment of chemotherapy, well, that's something the ongoing nurse can find out. You know, they, they absolutely have to have that in the handover. You know, that's in the charts or it's in the doctor's orders. And, and, you know, I'm sure there's a million places where you would find out who was the patient in room 1239 and why that patient was there. What they really want, what the experts want in a medical shift handover is for it to be future oriented. Particularly, they want it to be about the shift that's about to happen. So what you really want in a handover is for the outgoing person to tell you, here are the things I'm worried about on your shift. Here are the things that might go wrong. They've just finished 12 hours there. They're an experienced person. They're a colleague of yours. You know them well. What you want is their advice, their recommendations, their worries, their concerns about your shift. Well, what percent of time of shift handovers was spent on future concerns? 12%. And then what they argue is it should be the reverse. At least 50% of it should be on the future and the rest of it should be on the current situation. One final lesson I think is worth, worth knowing. There was no correlation between the handover length and the quality. Long handovers are not necessarily good handovers. I had lots of supervisors sort of bragged to me about how long their supervisors were. Well, in the medical world, there was hardly any correlation between length and quality. And that makes sense if you look at these findings above. If you're giving a uh, handover that's routine and boring, and that's about the current situation and not about the future, doesn't matter if you do that long or if you do that short. <laughs> that's, that's not a good handover, period. It's either a bad short handover or it's a bad long handover. They just didn't find a correlation between that. It's more about the topic and the enthusiasm than it was about the length. Now, let's go to our industry. Oil and gas, chemicals, mining, 
worst handovers, the absolute worst handovers, are those that rely exclusively on a handwritten logbook. So this means that the supervisor towards the end of the shift sits down and by hand writes blank pages into a handbook. That we find to be the worst form of shift handover. Why? It's associated with forgetting. So there's a really good study done in Australia, 169 maintenance supervisors in aircraft maintenance workshops, and they bring them together and they, they you know, they, they, they interview them individually, but, but what they ask them is over the course of your career, what's the worst mistake you ever made doing this job? So what they have is 169 supervisors remembering the worst mistakes they've ever made. And then they bring them back a second time and talk to them, well, what caused that? What was the causal factor here? What it was, was forgetting to do something they intended to do. Now, notice it's not a knowledge problem. What these supervisors didn't say is, well, I didn't know how to do X. They don't say that. What they said is, I knew how to do X. I forgot some part of it. And that led to the most serious mistakes of their career. Forgetting is a problem. Now, you could say to these people, hey, pay attention. You know, like, Stop forgetting. It would be a stupid thing to say because we have a thing called the working memory. The working memory is the part of your brain that's devoted to what they call the task at hand. The thing you're doing right now, you have working memory and it's dedicated to doing what's at the task at hand. You also have long-term memory. You remember the day you were married. You remember the day you graduated from high school. You remember some football game you saw or played in whatever. That's long-term memory, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about working memory. Working memory is the memory you're using when you're doing a, a current task. And what we know about that is you can only hold about four of those topics in your head at any one time. Very little variance across human beings. It's hardwired into the species. Some people do three, some people do five. Almost all of the population can hold about four topics in their working memory. Well, what happens when you put in more than four? Well, that's no problem. The brain just takes the other ones and puts them out. So as you try to put more topics in, the brain takes more topics out. And that type of taking topics out is what we call forgetting. And forgetting is by far the number one serious problem, particularly when you use a handwritten logbook. Well, let me close with one more stat for you. What percent of oil and gas production facilities rely on a handwritten logbook to do their shift handovers? 80%. 80% of oil and gas production facilities use the worst type of handover communication that produces the worst results. All right, that's it for bad. Um, here are the references, page one. You can come back and freeze this page if you want to look at three of these specifically. Here's references, page two. And um, here's our little team. My name is TJ. On Tuesday nights, we go to trivia night in a bar right across the street from our office. And, and I just thought I'd take a picture of this where I was sitting. And this is my Guinness right there. And these are the people we work with every day. So let's just give you a feeling of who we are. Um, in the next video, Safety Minute number three, I'm going to do the best handovers. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope these are useful for you. Bye. Okay. Hey.